Hi viewers, this is uh, Frank Costantino. Uh, welcome to my studio in my office space here at 13 Pauline Street in Winthrop. Uh, I've been uh, at this address for uh, almost 25 years now and I've been working in Winthrop uh, for most of my professional life since I started my own business back in 1972. My business comes from my training in architecture, uh, which I studied uh, in my college university years and also developed this particular specialization skill uh, during the course of my faculty training and my continued uh, education uh, here at the Boston Architectural College uh, and decided to put my artistic skills to work in generating perspectives and drawings and paintings for architects and architectural client firms initially in the Boston area but then uh, eventually all around the country. Uh, some of the work that I've produced uh, are of notable Boston projects. Uh, for example, the Copley Place project, uh, which was done for the uh, client. A, uh, uh, it was actually an investment firm from Etner Insurance Company, uh, and uh, they were the party responsible for most of the development that took place in Copley Square. Uh, the image that uh, is uh, one of my featured images was a watercolor that was done for Aetna Insurance Company and they provided a helicopter for me to be able to ride around the site and uh, take pictures of from the Prudential Center all the way up to the John Hancock Tower and circling around in between to get various shots of the project which was under construction at the time. Uh, so that was a, a very uh, a unique experience and uh, something that uh, uh, has really happened only once in my career. Uh, some of the firms that I've had the privilege to work for uh, are in the Boston area and also in Cambridge. Uh, you see some examples, uh, for instance, with the, uh, this aquarium image, uh, which is in Osaka, Japan, was one of my longtime clients in uh, the Cambridge area, Cambridge 7 and Associates. Uh, and this painting was uh, generated pretty much out of a gesticulation of ideas with very little drawings and, and very little information. Part of the work that I do as an illustrator and with my design and architectural background is to be able to work with these firms, to be able to collaborate with them and understand the intent of how they want to envision their particular design. So in this case, the, the, uh, the architect did not have any drawings to speak of, whether they were sketches or schematic or early stage design drawings, but they were something that um, was really part of a discussion that emerged in the generation of this drawing. Uh, so it was a novel idea. Uh, these were the architects that initially did the New England Aquarium. Uh, and this project is, uh, again, moving the, uh, the technologies, the innovations in aquarium design uh, to a underground uh, ramps and walkways that would bring the visitors down into below the water level and down into the environment of the marine life that you see pictured here. So in the case of uh, this particular drawing, the idea was to show light streaming in, coming down from above, and this kind of gesturing and excitement conveyed by the principal architect was really what drove sketches that then generated into a view as you see here, also including uh, Japanese children. I uh, happen to have gone to Japan a number of times and uh, had a sense of you know how they dressed and their gestures and what have you. So um, I also had the uh, pleasure of working with a uh, New York architect um, whose uh, show on architecture, by the way, Robert Stern was his name, uh, on the history of architecture in the United States. Uh, so I had the privilege of working for that particular firm in New York in generating this project, which is called 222 Berkeley Street. Uh, it, may, it may now be named differently uh, since this was done in the uh, late 80s. And uh, the, the complexity of a drawing like this comes from learning about perspective drawing, uh, learning about how to lay out uh, such uh, complicated arrangements within an urban landscape. Uh, in this case, it's uh, on uh, Berkeley and Boylston Street, which you can see here. This is the old Natural History Museum, which got converted to Bon Motella, then in turn got converted to Louis. Now I'm not sure what it is, but uh, anyway, it's a significant historic building in the city of Boston. Of course, you can see the new John Hancock Tower, and then the old John Hancock Tower, and then uh, 500 Boylston Street, which was done by another famous uh, New York architect. So all of these buildings combined together, you know, kind of a significant undertaking. And in fact, this uh, high-rise building uh, on Berkeley Street was the first high-rise of its kind by this particular architect, Robert Stern, and uh, he knew about my work uh, through various firms around and, and, uh, and my reputation around the country, so he hired me to do this illustration, which is all done in pencil drawing. Uh, the pencil technique was one era of uh, drawing that I developed uh, over the course of uh, my uh, career, and uh, this is uh, for the Johns Hopkins uh, uh, Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. 
uh, done in black and white pencil. Uh, a similar drawing, but done in color pencil, was this high-rise tower in um, uh, Seattle, Washington, uh, which was, uh, again, working with a firm out in the West Coast uh, to uh, represent the design for this high-rise tower uh, in a significant uh, site along the waterfront and uh, uh, some of the uh, surrounding environs looking all the way back to Mount Rainier. Um, part of the, as an architectural illustrator, to be able to work with clients to select the most appropriate view, to be able to describe their building, to be able to talk, uh, to demonstrate what this new project is going to look like, not only for the developer, their client, but also for the public in general. So it's a, uh, a really a, a consultancy arrangement where the design training and architectural training that I have speaks to their level of design and their uh, input for how to be able to visualize these, these types of um, uh, structures, ranging again from a complex like um, Copley, Copley Place with multiple buildings, you know, theaters, uh, an atrium lobby space, Neiman Marcus is in there, uh, there's uh, exploded suites that are part of the presidential suites for the, uh, the Marriott and um, uh, the Hilton hotels that are in that complex. Uh, and, and then also showing it at night so it could show the interior of the space as well as showing the circulation you know, in this particular part of Back Bay. Um, and then also seeing the Charles River up in the uh, right hand corner. Uh, some of my designs, uh, some of the design drawings that I do for clients never get built. Uh, the high-rise uh, high rise tower uh, in white uh, in the field background was one of a couple of sketches done for a longtime client in New Haven, Connecticut. And uh, this was in uh, South America in uh, Buenos Aires, and uh, it was a project that never got built. So the, uh, the collaborations that I have uh, sometimes come to realization in having projects be constructed. In some cases, they're really just an idea, but they never have any traction and never have a chance to really go uh, into you know final realization. Uh, a, for example, by contrast, uh, this piece is now, will now be on exhibit, but virtually because of the pandemic, uh, in a uh, exhibition for the American Society of Architectural Illustrators, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, for our 35th uh, annual exhibition of illustration work, which will premiere uh, virtually in Berlin, Germany. Uh, this was a representation of the John Hancock Tower, with another tower slicing through it. Uh, showing the idea of a secondary structure that would parallel Boylston Street and be a lead-in of high-rise towers leading down to the financial district as part of a master plan for uh, Boston, the city of Boston, and the whole uh, uh, creation of high-rise towers, which have emerged certainly during the course of my career, because when I was a student at the Boston Architectural Center, they were building the Prudential Center at the time. So this goes back, you know, some 50 plus years. Uh, so, uh, again, this representation is something that I'm proud to have exhibited and will be online very soon. Uh, other architects that I've worked for here in the uh, city of Boston uh, were designers for the new Tanglewood Shed uh, in, um, uh, in uh, the western part of the state. And uh, this subsequently got to be named for Seiji Ozawa, uh, the recently, recently deceased and very long-term conductor for the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Uh, the shed was shown in an evening view. Uh, showing some of the lighting uh, to represent the form of a barn, which is uh, typical for that western sort of uh, forested setting of Tanglewood, uh, showing it at night with the moon up in the sky area. And then another illustration showing the interior of this same shed with an audience, uh, an unusual design of uh, tiers and balconies that look down onto the, onto the orchestra, uh, seating directly behind the orchestra itself, and then uh, my interpretation of the figure of Seiji Ozawa in the drawing. Again, these were done in pencils, uh, done in a combination of different pencils on a vellum surface, which is a transparent medium that uh, architects and illustrators like myself use quite, quite a bit uh, during that era. Uh, this other piece is uh, also uh, done on vellum with a slightly different media, but it's the, um, the Mass Convention Center up on Boylston Street. And this particular drawing was the third phase of a series of drawings that were done over a two and a half, three year period for the architectural firm here in Boston to generate the designs, go through a view process with the city to be able to get input from uh, uh, different users, uh, the convention authority itself, as well as the continuing evolving design ideas from the architects. It's a very exciting environment to be able to work with architects, to be able to be involved in the design dialogues, uh, work directly with the principals, the owners of the firms, in the cases of almost all of these drawings here, uh, and be able to develop 
a vision of what this building would look like as they developed their designs and as I was able to interpret it in these kinds of drawings. So this is the culmination of a, uh, a long series of uh, studies, sketches, drawings, uh, discussions that uh, occurred with uh, the architectural firm to be able to come to a realization like this. This drawing was then uh, used in a colored state. I did a colored version of this. It was used in a colored state and it was, uh, as was Copley Place, and it was plastered all over the Logan Airport as a promotion, as an advertising for the new building that was coming to the city of Boston. So I'm very proud about the fact that my work has gotten that kind of exposure here in the city as well as elsewhere. So I have some other work which I'd like to show you and, and talk about another uh, organization that I happen to found uh, here in the United States. So uh, we'll proceed to another area. So of the uh, illustrators group which I had referred to uh, a short while ago is called the American Society of Architectural Illustrators. And what this group is is uh, the, the association of architectural illustrators uh, made up of architects, artists, uh, professional illustrators, uh, just people that are interested in pursuing a career and being able to do representations like this primarily for architects uh, or engineering firms or contracting firms or developing companies, development companies. Uh, and this organization is uh, something I'm very proud to say is in its 35th year right now. Uh, we've had uh, exhibitions all over the United States. We've had exhibitions in Japan, in Australia. We are having a premier exhibition, our 35th, in Berlin, Germany. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be virtual this year. Uh, we've had uh, a couple of venues in uh, Canada as well and all over the United States. So we're very proud to uh, bring illustrators to submit to our competitions, which we sponsor each year, and have uh, works from all over the world that are then juried for exhibition uh, in our events. Uh, so all of the works that you see here on this wall have been exhibited, chosen by jury, and have been exhibited in various venues all around the country in two, three, or uh, ten different venues uh, during the course of any given uh, exhibition year. Uh, the works that are displayed, uh, again, this is a, uh, an example of a sketch type of drawing that was done for the designers of the uh, Mass Convention Center, which I had left off earlier. Uh, and this was a sketch technique for Pier 4, uh, which is now called the Seaport Boulevard. And this drawing shows a galleria at Pier 4, which at the, end of, uh, at the time at the end of Northern Avenue and it was uh, the idea of recreating a very uh, open, uh, sunlit space that led out into the water area. I did a uh, series of multiple drawings for this one. This particular piece was chosen for exhibition. Uh, the piece on the lower right, somewhat obscured, is uh, now built. It's the Lowe's W Hotel on Stewart Street in Boston. Uh, and the architect for this project is the same architect that did Tanglewood. Uh, I had the benefit of, of providing good work, building that better mousetrap, bringing up the quality, qualitative level of what it is that I do for my clients, and I had the benefit of repeat clientele for many, many firms, not only here in the Boston, New England area, but also all over the country, and was fortunate to have long-term associations with these different firms. Uh, the example you see up here is behind what was formerly the New England Merchants Bank, uh, and it's now uh, TD Bank, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but the view is to show the glassed-in enclosure that was going to be expanding the lobby area, uh, secondary access off of the Washington Square, and then you can see through on the arcade part of the um, uh, old State House building in the background. Uh, and this was done for a, a local firm. And again, you can see the sketchy kind of quality in this drawing as opposed to a more refined quality of graphite and pencil drawing that was done here. Uh, moving to the, uh, in the pencil arena, uh, on, the, on, on your far left is the uh, uh, 176 Federal Street, which is called the Weld Building, and it was owned by the Weld family. Uh, and the commission for this particular illustration was the top floor penthouse space. So I did have photographs and other references to be able to set up a perspective drawing. Underneath all of these uh, drawings are actual layouts and sketches that set the framework and the three-dimensional space for these type of illustrations. Uh, so in the case of um, 176 Federal Street, uh, it was uh, again modulated to uh, show the new penthouse area, but also to show the context of its adjacent neighbors in, uh, in Federal Street and in the South Station area. So directly behind us is the old South Station um, uh, terminal. Uh, as far as the process of doing architectural illustration, even this sketch, which was done for the Istanbul 20, uh, 2000 Olympics, uh, 
the, this drawing was really just a sketch idea that was part of an early discussion with my client who was down in Atlanta uh, to be able to uh, portray more effectively the form of his design for a gymnastics stadium. Uh, so it was done uh, in, as an underlay, which in turn was the basis for a lot of the sketches that you see here. They were just done freehand. So there's an artistic element that, uh, that, that, that also is part of the training as an architect and as an illustrator to be able to understand perspective and space and depth to be able to generate sketches like this, make it convincing and be able to draw it in proportion. Uh, and that in turn underlies all of these drawings, even though in the case of the weld building, uh, some of those drawings were laid out with, uh, uh, in, in a you know, desk setup like this, laid out in perspective with very hard line, uh, very geometric uh, proportionate uh, uh, layouts. Uh, the other piece that you see here is for a, uh, a corner of a stage idea uh, in a, uh, a theater in Japan for the, uh, an, an NHK complex in Tokyo. Uh, it was done for a special client of mine in uh, New Haven, Connecticut, for whom I worked for 25 years, uh, and very dependably and very constantly. Uh, and he trusted my judgment on this. So uh, since it was in Japan, the idea of showing Kabuki, theater, uh, kabuki players in the theater uh, and be able to portray his design in the background, looking from the stage out into the theater, which is the only way you're going to see the interior of the theater, became a strategy for a lot of uh, theater design complexes that I had done over the years. You can see another example of that with this piece, uh, which is a uh, significant piece of illustration work for me uh, in, uh, at, at Delphi University in New York. And uh, this shows a, a small performing stage and theater for uh, their musical program and showing a quartet on stage and a new interior space. Again, that was done by a Boston firm. Uh, and uh, this piece uh, happened to win uh, the top prize in the American Society of Illustrators um, annual competition. Uh, that top prize is uh, what's shown here, which is called the Hugh Ferris Memorial Prize. Uh, and this medallion and the framing that you see here is something that I've been doing on behalf of the winning members that have also won this prize uh, to show the importance of the work, the selectivity of uh, that particular piece, that winning piece that came from three, four, five, six hundred submissions. So, you know, to be able to win a Hugh Ferris Prize is pretty significant and uh, something that uh, I'm very proud of. Uh, I'm also proud to have been part of creating this medallion, being able to uh, have it cast. Uh, in fact, uh, I was helped here by our, another of our local uh, Art Association members and uh, a very talented uh, sculptor and designer, uh, Greg Kersey. So Greg Kersey helped uh, design this particular medallion for us. So I'm really, uh, that is quite a bit of history to uh, this particular prize that uh, we named after one of the most preeminent architectural illustrators, American illustrators of this century, uh, Hugh Ferris. Uh, another example of a sketch technique uh, was done for, uh, again, the same firm uh, as the uh, Japan Theater here. Uh, but this was a request by a foundation that was supporting the creation of a performing arts center in the cultural district in Miami. And the, the client, which was an amalgam of uh, different wealthy individuals that had different companies, uh, wanted to see you know, what style of illustration you know, would fit this particular uh, uh, project, which was pretty expansive. There was a concert hall in a performing arts theater. So I had to demonstrate my particular approach to using watercolor uh, and be able to provide a sketch drawing that uh, was indicative of what they could, what they would likely get uh, in representing the architect's design. So this is again a taken from the stage, uh, looking back out from an orchestra out into a larger theater complex, and then showing a, uh, a highlighted um, uh, chandelier uh, element within the space itself. Uh, this, this this project I worked on for. Uh, off and on uh, with different phases of the design and development of the project, worked off and on on a project like this for about five years or so, and then did some subsequent work on a naming opportunity seven years after I did this sketch for the architect. 